Now let's consider the common charge that media lead to ideological segregation, especially as this charge has been applied to the Internet. And the basic question here is whether Internet use causes us to cluster in groups of like-minded others and avoid different points of view. One investigation of this question draws on microdata from 2004-2009 on browsing and web activities, individual level data on the use of non-internet media, and also just questionnaire data on political views. If we put all this together, it will help us answer the question posed above. And from that data, here are some key results. First, the average internet user gets about 57% exposure to conservatives, and that is slightly to the left of the adult population as a whole. The average conservative's exposure on internet use is slightly over 60%. By the way, if you're wondering, if you were an individual and all you did was visit foxnews.com, that would count at about 88% exposure to conservative point of view. The average liberal's exposure is a little over 53%. From this, we can define what is called an isolation index for the Internet, and the isolation index is to take the typical conservative's exposure, which is 60.6% given above, and take the typical liberal's exposure, which is 53.1%, again given above, and subtract one from the other, and we get 7.5%, and that again is what we are calling the isolation index. That's picking up how ideologically different is the internet consumption of a typical conservative from a typical liberal. Just to give that its own slide, that's the isolation index for the internet, and it's measured at about 7.5%. In my view, that's actually pretty low, and we can ask why might that be. There are at least two main reasons. First, there are lots of widely visited mainstream sites, like, say, CNN.com on the internet, which are visited by both liberals and conservatives. Second, there are also many internet readers, typically quite sophisticated, who use multiple outlets for their news and visit a wide variety of sources, and those people tend to sample from both the left and the right, and that also contributes to ideological diversity in patterns of internet consumption. It's worth comparing the 7.5% isolation index for the Internet to other isolation indices, and some of them for other media are really quite low. So for broadcast news, we have 1.8%. That's extremely low. For cable TV news, there's more sorting going on. That's about 3.3%. Magazines, it's higher at 4.7%. And local newspapers are coming in at 4.8%. Uh, those are all lower than for the Internet, but note that national newspapers, the isolation index is calculated at 10.5%, and of course that's higher than what we find for the Internet. I'd say this is basically picking up that TV as a whole tends to be pretty mainstream. Just to conduct an imaginary thought experiment, imagine somehow eliminating the Internet, and also imagine these other media wouldn't change, well, that mathematically would lower the overall media isolation index from 5.1% to 4.1%, so it would go down a bit, but that's hardly a major change. One striking result of this paper is that the isolation index is actually higher in so-called real life than for most media. So if we calculate that same index for voluntary associations, we find it's 14.5%. For the workplace, it's 16.8%. For neighborhoods, higher yet, over 18%. And for family, well, there, it's over 24%. The 7.5% for the Internet is much lower than these, and it shows that the Internet actually can be, sick, can be considered ideologically integrating compared to non-media life. The Internet is getting us considerably more exposure to different points of view than we would get in the spheres of our life, which don't have that much to do with media. A key and important result here is that, in general, media seem to be an integrating, non-isolating force in American life, at least compared to other influences. This is all taken from what is one of my favorite papers on media and media use, and that's by Matt Genskow and Jesse Shapiro. It's called Ideological Segregation Online and Offline, and it's available online.